Okay, the next one, Prop 3, um, it's an interesting one. There's actually an opposition campaign. They don't have any filings as September 30th, but I've heard the commercials, so I know they got money somewhere. Um, Prop 3 is the Children's Hospitals bonds. In uh, November of 04, we passed $750 million in bonds for children's hospitals. This is a follow-on to that, to continue that investment. 20% of it would go to the five UC hospitals that focus on research on children's issues. The other, 80, uh, the other 800 million or so would go to this list of children's hospitals across the state. Uh, the LAO's sort of gone through the filtering mechanism and these are the ones that qualify. Children's hospitals serve an important role in terms of providing access to healthcare, especially for low income households, but they do a lot of the sort of leading edge stuff in you know, cancer research and other kinds of you know, chronic disease situations. Um, it's a billion dollars in bonds, which means it'll roughly cost us $2 billion. Uh, the polling on it, as you can imagine, children are very popular in California. Um, as of September 30th, the polling was about 50 to 35 in favor of it. Um, there's probably, since it's going to pass the debate, you know, part of it is, are children's hospitals really our top priority, or does our health care, you know, should we be spending this billion dollars on other kinds of health care along the way? Um, it, you know, the proponents argue it's going to provide some key capacity. I haven't seen any significant utilization studies, though, showing that, in fact, there's a tremendous shortage of this kind of capacity in the state. Um, clearly, if you build it, it will come. Uh, so there's an expectation that this won't go unused, but there hasn't been sort of a comprehensive nonpartisan analysis yet to show whether there's a need or not. Um, on the other side, the cost, it's a modest cost in terms of capital. It's, it's earmarked explicitly for capital improvements. It's not designed for operational funding. Um, one of the big concerns is uh, the accountability. The opponents at least have raised the issue of that there's some ambiguity in the language. From what I've read, I'm not sure that how much of that's real and how much of that's just some, an issue that they can raise in the debate. Um, from a practical perspective, is it, it is what it is. It's a billion dollars of debt to go out and build infrastructure for children's hospitals. Prop 10, this is a really interesting one. Uh, this one has, few, has generated a lot of interest. Um, so far, the yes side has about seven and a half million, or wait, am I on the right one? Yeah, yes, has seven and a half million dollars. Um, the no side, as of September 30th, hadn't filed that they had any money on hand, but they've been running TV commercials as well. Uh, the opposition is coming from organized labor for the most part, um, and in favor is coming from natural gas producers, especially automobile natural gas producers. This initiative basically issues $5 billion in bonds to create a rebate, mostly to create a rebate fund. About 40% of it, or 80% of it goes to create a fund for rebates in alternative fuel high mileage vehicles. So if you buy a vehicle that doesn't use gasoline or diesel, and it has high mileage, it has more than 40 mile, 45 miles per gallon for one set of rebates or 60, then the state would give you a rebate of somewhere between two, and if you do it for an 18 wheeler, $50,000. And that would be used to offset the price of the car and to subsidize sort of purchasing these vehicles. Not only that, but they would give you $2,000 to set up a home refueling station for your vehicle. Now, the funding for this has come largely from natural gas producers because it turns out once you take hybrids, and remember, hybrids use gasoline, so they're not eligible for this. Once you take hybrids out of the mix, the predominant mechanism out there for vehicles to do this are compressed natural gas vehicles. And so you have a marketplace for this. Uh, T. Boone Pickens owns a company called uh, Clean Energy Fuels Corp out of Oklahoma, and they've put up almost all of the $7.5 million as of September 30th. For how many years did the rebates continue? Uh, essentially, I think it's until they run out of money. So in other words, there's, you know, there's $4 billion sitting there, and, and they get to issue rebates until they run out. There is about a billion dollars between these odds and ends for R&D and education um, in, in renewable fuel technology, but the main thrust of it is creating this pool for rebates. Who issues these checks? Do they, do they create a new department? They have an, yeah, they set up an authority to handle it. I mean, that's all part of it. There's not a lot of administrative costs. There's a cap, I think, of 1% on what they can spend. And one of the concerns, obviously, is administering a program this large. Is that enough money? Or are we going to have to subsidize that part of it out of the state general fund? The debates, you know, the big goal is to eliminate diesel trucks that pollute in our highways. 
uh, CNG does burn significantly cleaner than gasoline and than diesel. And so that's one of the big pluses for it. Um, it would also subsidize some alternative fuel development. Uh, yeah, the no arguments, obviously the people who are supporting this and who qualified it have a vested interest in the outcome, especially as the possessors of the only technology out there. And so in some ways, some see this as a subsidy of, you know, two to $50,000 for the purchase of their product. Um, fleet operators would get the bulk of this because they're going to have the more expensive vehicles. They're going to have the panel vans, the big trucks, and things like that. Um, and so there's a sense that in, even with the $4 billion, that that subsidy is not going to be focused on consumers as, as much as it is on corporate interests. Um, and then, again, the uh, bias towards natural gas. Any questions on this exciting bond? <laughs> The last bond is actually probably, I would say, the least controversial issue on the entire ballot. It's the Veterans Bond Act, borrows a billion dollars to fund a loan pool for veterans. California has a loan program called CalVets, where they actually will subsidize um, first-time borrowing. They, they'll subsidize the loan money to veterans um, who qualify under the provisions. And it's, pretty, it's a pretty loose provision. My wife actually qualified, and she was in the Army for four years, for example. Um, and it's a basic mortgage. And they go out and they loan money. It's a benefit for serving your country. The state has done this. This is the fifth in a series of these. The state doesn't typically lose money on these. They loan the money out, and then they collect mortgage payments. Um, and so this, there's, there's no spending on either side of this. The legislature puts these on periodically as that fund starts to run out of money. In this time in the economy especially, you know, the, the question of availability of resources for home buyers. Uh, this, there's not a lot of controversy. This has general support across the board. Um, there's been $8 billion since 1921. From a practical perspective, this is a pretty small amount to add to that pool. 